Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for dialing in early. I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes. We are right on two o'clock central here. So I'll give everyone a couple minutes to, uh, to dial in, but thank you for being so punctual. Um, we have got a really good hour in store for you here. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes of awkward silence and then we'll get into it. We've got some good people coming in now, which is great. Okie dokie. We might just give it one more minute. Thank you again, everyone. Okay, well, let's just get stuck in, shall we? Hey, uh, thank you everyone for dialing in and welcome to the Transformational Advice Experience for your clients and your firm, a webinar here proudly brought to you by LibertyFi, Lumiant, and Dennis Mosley-Williams. Uh, this is a, a webinar that we, we've we all just been on the, on the call for about 15 minutes, but we're all so, super excited to, to, to talk to you and uh, hopefully you can feel that energy coming through as we as we get into our content today. But the reason we're super excited is as we talk to you today about each of our expertise and what that means for the, the great client experiences that you can provide to your clients, you should start to feel a natural sort of synergy around how we're talking to you today. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, in terms of introductions, um, you're going to hear from three of us today. So my name is Mark Ackroyd. I am the head of product here at Lumiant. And if you don't know Lumiant, we're an advice experience and client engagement platform that advisors and clients can call home. And what that means for us is we believe in using values-led experiences to help clients become healthy, wealthy, and wise. And the way that we do that is we support advisors like yourselves with technology that creates scalable, memorable, and measurable client experiences. So we're super excited here. If you haven't picked up already, um, I have a, a, an Australian accent. I unfortunately can't turn that off. Um, but I need to acknowledge it uh, for you all, just in case you're wondering, because um, we are uh, over here and I'm, I'm over here based out of Chicago, Illinois. We originally started over in Sydney, Australia, and uh, we get the best of both worlds with some of the great stuff happening over in the advice industry in Australia and, and all the great things that you do over here. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to show you how we interpret that into great experiences today. Uh, joining me uh, today is also Dennis Mosley-Williams, founder of DMW Strategic Consulting. So uh, for those of you that don't know Dennis, he's a certified expert in the experience economy. Um, what that means for Dennis is that he helps organizations understand that customer experience is the predominant economic offering in the world today, as distinct from services, as services are from goods. He demonstrates that in ways which experiences can be crafted and staged so they entice, educate, satisfy, and most importantly, transform. And if you have heard of his name before, maybe one of the ways you've heard of it is that he is also the author of Serious Shift, How Experience Staging Can Save Your Practice, a guidebook on how the experience economy can be adapted specifically to the financial services industry. So we're really excited to have Dennis uh, on the call today, and you'll hear from him shortly. And last but certainly not least, we've got Davis Priester joining us from Liberty Fire. Um, if you if you don't know Davis, Davis is responsible for ensuring that Investnet platform is configured to support Liberty Fire practices needs. Uh, Davis has been in the financial services industry for nearly ten years. Previously employed by Stern, Aggie, and Leach Incorporated. I'm sorry if my Australian accent has uh, has has robbed that, but uh, <laughs> over there he was an investment analyst. Perfect. Uh, for the, that, that'll do. We're, we're cool with that. Um, you're an investment analyst over there for the wealth management division, and you've worked with financial advisors, consulting with them on how to make their books of business more efficient. 
um, where specifically you are, you're con contributing around things like focusing uh, on helping clients develop competency and efficiency using investment advisory technology at workflows. So hopefully uh, for those of you in the audience who's starting to piece together why we're so excited, you've got this entire ecosystem from what a great client experience is to how you need to structure up your practice to realize efficiencies to deliver those experiences. So we're going to try our best to cover the full gamut today, specifically what that means for you. If um, you can see the agenda here, uh, we're going to get into trans transformational client experiences with Dennis, uh, specifically why a focus on financial products and services will lose you business revenue and clients and why non-financial aspirations, not financial goals will drive better client experiences that differentiate your firm. In a, in a society where more and more things are being commoditized, we hear all the time that differentiation is so important. Um, we'll spend about half an hour with Dennis talking through some of that, and then we'll move into how Lumion might be able to help you bring those to life. And we'll finish with how Liberty Fire can then help you scale um, and we, we're going to try and do that where we can probably carve out 15 to 10 minutes towards the end for Q&A. But um, what I will also say is we've got our lovely Nicola Perry from our sales team here at Lumion on the call. You can see her there. Uh, she'll be on the call all, all the time, uh, monitoring the chat, monitoring the Q&A, so that if any questions pop up as uh, Dennis is speaking, Davis is speaking, or myself is speaking, um, please just pop them into the Q&A. And, uh, and Nicola will, will make sure that we can carve out the time to answer those, whether it be at the end or if it makes more sense to, uh, to get into it whilst one of us is speaking, uh, she'll, she'll politely interrupt us because I think as you'll see, and as I've probably demonstrated over the first seven minutes, we could all talk for the full hour. So um, with that, uh, I wanna say welcome again, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can uh, see everyone's beautiful faces here. And we're going to start with Dennis. Welcome, Dennis. How are you? Good, sir. And thank you for joining us. Mark, thank you. Davis, nice to see you. Nicola, nice to see you. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I'm really well. I finished a little speaking tour last week, and now I'm home. And working from home always feels like I'm on vacation. So I'm feeling abundant and at high tide, my friend. Uh, well, well, we'll take it. It is so good to have you back in your lovely home office and uh, and with your energy here for us today. Look, Dennis, let's just get straight into it. I mean, this entire uh, hour is about transformational client experiences and what that means for, for financial advisors and their clients. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, before we even get into the problem uh, there or the, the solution there, let, let's start right at the right at the start here. You know, one of the things that we were going to talk about, and I think it's quite a controversial statement of why it's, it's good to start, is why a focus on financial products and services will actually lose you business, revenue, and clients. Um, and I think if we start there, that'll that'll give us a pretty good bedrock into where we're going today. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's start right there in the deep hot end. Appreciate that. Why not? <laughs> not like them immediately. <laughs> Choice. Let's just uh, get, right, get that Let's done just get right now. <laughs> okay, here's why. There's three things. Look at it this way. There's three things that every advisor does. There's service, experience, and consequence. Service is what we do. Financial planning. It's the functional work that we are asked to do. All of it competes on price. The market pays what the market will bear. And right now they pay around 1%. Here's why. Because so far with limited options, they can't pay less. The moment that they can, they will. Experience is how you do it. How a business stages, I use that word intentionally, stages their products and their services. And what everybody listening knows is that even when you're buying something as common as a cup of coffee. If the experience is there, the transaction means more to the client. And this isn't trite. It, when, when you feel seen and understood, when you feel like you are an individual, the transaction means, means more. When it is so delightful, it registers as a memory. When you think I could do this all day, you're having an experience, the transaction means more. The third is, consequence. 
why, first of all, what is an experience? How does it differ from service? And maybe an even more important question is why experience? And you might think, well, I think we answered it. Service is about efficiency. Experience is about emotion and engagement and people will pay more for it. That's why, but that's not the why I'm actually getting at. Where This is specifically for you financial advisors. Service, experience, and the last is consequence. What advisors need to do is not only stage a better experience, they have to stage a series of sequential experiences all connected by one organizing idea with the, with the end in mind being to guide the client to a transformation. We don't, we don't wanna deliver services. Those are fungible commoditized things available anywhere that are very important, but not in any way unique or special. You stage experiences, and what we say all the time is, you know, because you've probably heard it enough to be sick of hearing it, but I figured I'd tell you again, and this time we can all watch you react with your face. All business is theater. All work is theater. Every business is a stage. So we stage experiences. We stage it so that when you walk into our offices in an investment firm, it feels like something. And lastly, we guide transformations. It's a huge word. I'll say something, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put it in a, in a box and then stop for a second and let everybody catch their breath. Transformation. I'm not suggesting that the goal of every advisor should be that people hold hands and burst into tears in their office and say, oh my God, I'm never gonna be the same. Nor am I gonna tell you that would be a bad thing. <laughs> what I'm saying is transformation is about creating within the client at least the possibility to reconsider their beliefs or their behavior. There is, as you know, so much more that goes into a wealthy life than just a portfolio. We know this, everybody knows this, nobody needs to be convinced. But for advisors, or pardon me, for investors, if they need some kind of help in some other aspect of their life, which they feel requires attention, the financial advisor in my, from where I'm sitting is the most logical person to help that person. Even if it's something, especially I should say, if it's something non-financial. But what the industry has done up until this point, Mark, as you know, is, you know, enter Lumiant, da, 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 is we've comfortably told ourselves a lie. It's a comforting lie, though, the very best kind. It's not my job. I'm just gonna, it's just, it's not, that stuff's not my job. And what I'm saying is it is, it is our job. And that to truly, to make a profit for a client is to leave a profit and that there's so much more involved than just the portfolio. So therefore, if all you're selling is goods and services, you're gonna lose, you're just gonna lose. Whereas if you focus on the client and who you're helping them become, then I would almost dare you. It's like, good luck. Good luck trying to stay a secret. Go change a bunch of lives, okay? And try and tell me you don't have a capacity issue now. It's, it's just gonna happen. That's the way it is. Thank you, Dennis. I'll let you grab your breath. Hey, uh, audience, if anything that Dennis is saying there is making you wanna go, yeah, okay, that's great. I'm, inv I'm invested. Tell me more. Please use the Q&A our uh, function and, and we can do this, but I'm going to do my best to represent what I think might be on your mind as Dennis speaks there, because Dennis, there's so much around what you just said that I think we can get into the detail for the work that we do with financial advisors. I'm sure Davis could, could, uh, could attest to this as well. Um, yeah, everyone just wants to get into, okay, but what does that actually mean for me? What, where do I start? What, did, what are the things that I can do differently? And then we can sort of talk around maybe the practical side of it. But if I, if I take one of your comments uh, there, because there's plenty, you, the, the one that I really want to get into is you mentioned that 
every every business is a stage. Yeah. 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 Deliberate words around stage, right? Um, yes. Can you maybe tell me why you use that word stage and what that might mean in the context of financial advisors and their client experiences? Yeah, for sure. You know, as I remind myself, don't talk for an hour. It's the keynote um, uh, occupational hazard. I always assume I got an hour. The idea is to completely engage the client. It changes your posture when you think about what you're doing as art, as a performance. Be, when you deliver services, you're focused on efficiency. You believe this is what the financial services industry did. It's what every business does. There's When we want to create value for a client, what's the first thing we can do? Charge less. We decreased it by 10, the cost by 10%. And the belief, which is wrong, is we've created 10% value. No, you didn't. You didn't make any value. You just made it cheaper. The second is we say, let's innovate using technology and save people time. Let's save you 30 minutes. That's creating value. Take financial planning. And, and, uh, and, what, and what the, the pandemic event did for Zoom specifically, look what it did. It turned this into an everyday technology we use. When delivering services, every single time you save a client time, you, have, you will lead to your own commoditization. Now go to staging. It changes your posture. What work can, oh, I'm so sorry. Just back to service for one second. Sorry, everyone. The question that drives service is what do we want the client to do? Now let's go to experience. Experience, we believe that we create value by creating engagement. So if we say, let's stage it, it changes your posture. It changes the way you approach the work. And what we're looking to do is not save anybody time. We're looking to create time well spent. Time with an advisor should absolutely be each and every time this emotional. First question we ask is, how do I want you to feel? We worry about what we want you to do later. The first thing I want to concern myself with is how you feel. And what I want to create is time well spent, if not even well invested. Time that's emotional, meaningful, um, memorable for goodness sakes, memorable, deeply personal and ultimately transformational. What that looks like is, a. this is what that looks like. It looks like a client that's hanging on your every word. It looks like a client who just took a photograph of the wall in your office. Why? Because there's even something on the wall of your office tied to what you do that's delighting and engaging and educating the client. We stage, we use that term because it informs our work, okay? Sometimes magic, sometimes wonder, sometimes experience is nothing more than one person spending a little bit more time on something that anybody else would think is reasonable. People shouldn't show up at your office. They should be received at your office. It should feel like something. And ultimately you should be trying to take that client somewhere. All of this isn't just to delight them. It's to fundamentally change them. Yeah, Dennis, so stay there for me, please. Um, so you're talking about fundamentally changing them. You, yeah. use, the, you use the term in your earlier um, uh, messaging around being a guide through that relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I could feel or I could imagine um, through some of the advisors we worked with before is, uh, I mean, arguably we've been delivering great service and maybe we could say we've been delivering good experience for the entire you know time of our business um because people keep coming back right they keep coming back for their annual review and you know we smash out our client advocacy surveys we've got a great mps i'm doing okay they're they're paying yeah. my they're paying my service fee so wh yeah. what does it mean to sort of be that guide now and, and why should i care like what does that actually look like what 
I, I suppose, what does the client look like? What do I look like? What's different to what I'm doing already? Okay. E, these are good questions, brother. I try. First of all, just to correct something, well, you you would never deliver an experience because you know you don't deliver experiences. You stage the marks. So you just did it yourself a minute ago. There you go. You know how right now there's a topic that's having a huge, uh, it's having its moment, it's behavioral finance. It's having its moment. And I'd like to say it should be having its moment. It's one of the most fascinating freaking subjects going. And I've been telling people that for like close to 30 years. Go tell everybody how their brains work and what money does to them. It's fascinating. We all we can all relate with everything that is being said when we're sitting there in the audience. It's a giant me too moment, right? Oh, I do that too. Oh, yes, yes. This is where I'm going. Then what? The transformation isn't just how we think about our money. So I'm I'm getting right to your answer right to your question it's about everything else it is fascinating to learn about how you think and behavior finance it'll make the ride easier for you and not only is it interesting it undoubtedly will add value to your life being educated that way undoubtedly it will help you turn off the dumb stuff you shouldn't be listening to undoubtedly but what about absolutely everything else now this is where it gets very personal the answer to mark's question where am I guiding them? <laughs> what does that look like? Don't look to me. So just stick with me here. At the heart of your financial planning practice is a secret. I'm speaking to you all as individuals that you want that you just that you will die for you know it's so true it's your secret it's your truth about life and what a successful life is what a person has to do it's what you'd tell me if we were at my cottage together let me tell you something dennis and you'd share your wisdom with me okay it's not something you think is clever and you think you can sell no it's if if you had a hundred clients and none of them had to worry about money. What would you tell them to worry about instead? And if you have to imagine that these are a hundred clients you love, do so. What would you tell your children if your children said to you, I want to be rich? You'd say, well, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting thing to say. Tell me what that means to you. And then you would educate them about what a truly rich, wealthy, fulfilling, meaningful, wonderful life is. Boom. Where I'm going is, that's what you're doing with your financial services practice. Inside, we have this truth we know that we want to be willing to use our business to teach. And the second thing is generosity. We want to share it. So this is it. And I mean, Mark, now I'm literally cribbing your notes. When I fell in love with Lumiant, it was because you saw the value in reaching and moving beyond the functional work. That's the service that gets them in the door. Great example. I want a million dollars. I need a financial plan. Help me. Okay, but once we have that in place, it's for everybody listening. Once a person has a financial plan in place and, a, and, a, and, a, and an advocate, I prefer to say advocate, not an advisor. This is my own nerdiness here, okay? An advocate is a person who publicly supports or champions a cause. These, this is your truth. Okay, mine would be small is beautiful. Turn it away. Say no to more often to everything else and say yes more often to your family. Run a great business. I mean, I have my truths and I'm willing to share them with the people I work with. The transformation, everybody, is not the portfolio. It's when your client says to you, geez, Mark, I never thought about that before. What, Davis, you just blew. Okay, Davis, say that to me again. What did you just say? R tell me that again, because it's in me. That's what I'm talking about. And this idea is like, what kind of experiences? Onboarding a client, client events, check-in calls. Every action you take with a client is an experience. But what kind of education do you bring to them? Client events. What do you con? Do you have books? We've got all these books in our background. Do you actually read them or do they just make your Zoom room look good? 
What are the books every advisor has that every client has to read? Things I want you to think about and work on. Like, again, there's the service, there's the experience of how it feels, and then there's a desire to partner with the client, providing them all the resources that they require to achieve their aspirations in one of these other areas. Does it mean you have to have a nutritionist on your staff for your clients that want to live a healthier version of themselves? No, but it means you got to have one in your Rolodex who you consider on your team. That's what I mean. I hope that answered your question. Everybody probably fell asleep in the middle of it. <laughs> well, I mean, that'd be a first. Um, but you, you certainly answered it. And I, I, I do want you to, to now hit on then, Dennis, because I think the way you speak about this and, and the concepts you've spoken about are, you know, inarguable almost, right? But sure. if I'm sitting there in my practice, uh, there's probably a couple of things on my mind um, from a really practical standpoint. Won't this cost me time? Yeah. Yeah. And if it costs me time, then what's the commercial trade-off? Okay, well, now you're just asking me questions that bug me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it is. Can you imagine what's going on with these poor people in the audience right now? Between your Australian accent and my Canadian vowels? Yeah, I know. We're going to think through this. <laughs> First of all, let me tell you what I do to your business if I overhauled you, because it's going to answer your question. I'll do it fast. The scary, th the scariest part about realizing I'm right and following me on this is this: services are for everybody, experiences are for some people. So if you're out, if you're listening and you're like, geez, I like to work with small business owners. It's like, you can tell yourself a lie, a lie every night. I live in a city of a million people. You can climb into bed every night and tell yourself a big comfortable lie. Do you know how many small businesses there are in Ottawa where I live, city of a million? Gee, if I just got 0.01% of all these small businesses, I'd have the most successful financial planning practice in town. That's if you're selling services. But when you decide your business is something that has something to offer, for people to buy into. I wanna work with small business owners that are interested in personal and professional development and thinking and TED Talks and all that stuff. And you start thinking about how you're gonna create something like that, just stick with me, then right away you realize the number of businesses in your city of a million people shrinks right down. Oh, that's not very many. It's like, I know, and that gets a little scary. Having said that, smaller is better. Okay, smaller is better. Here's the next part. So the first thing I tell you is you got to go niche, niche. We say weird, but I'm trying not to. Wow, make your work for people who care. Here is the second. Yes, it may take you a little bit of time. Sometimes to have something really good, you have to work for it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. As my dad used to say, why should you be spared? Yeah, it might take some time. It will not take a tremendous amount more time to, to deploy this for your clients. Secondly, secondly, experience doesn't cost a lot of money. No, it don't. That's, that's one of the problems with thinking about experience design is we all go to Disney in our brain. It's like, you don't have to do anything like that. I recently had a client that literally bought glass water bottles at a dollar store filled them up, put them in the refrigerator, took them out of the refrigerator, put them in a nice clean boardroom in the middle of the table, condensation, the client literally commented on them. So they said, well, here you can have them thinking whatever, I'll get two more. And the same thing kept happening. They were dollar water bottles that made an impact. I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but I'm going to say this, you also shouldn't start by thinking, how can I get what I want without having to pay for it? When you, if you're, a, to use the metaphor of the coffee shop, there's a lot, there's a huge, they're to, two totally different businesses. There's a lot of difference between a Starbucks and a Dunkin' Donuts, two excellent companies. One's an experience, one's a service, both run by smart people that know what they're doing. If Dunkin' Donuts, a service deliverer, decided overnight, let's become an experience, it's not just a paint job. 
It's a fundamental shift in thinking and it's worth doing. It won't cost you a lot of money. It won't take a lot of time and it will absolutely come back to you in spades. There's enough evidence that I'm not, I can't cite at this moment that tells you we can even put a number on it. It exists. Dennis, that's excellent. We're, we're going to, uh, no doubt, I think we'll come back to you uh, in Q&A time, but thank you for, for giving us the uh, the opening of our webinar today. Um, yes, I, I ask you the annoying questions. Uh, I know, I know, <laughs> but you answer them so well, so it's hard not to. Um, and these are, these are going to be things that are on people's minds. So if okay. we take a, a, little, a little pivot here, Thanks, Dennis. Dennis will stick around for the rest of the webinar, everyone. So if you haven't had a chance to ask a question yet, please uh, pop it in the Q&A um, whilst I uh, spotlight myself here because um, you're now going to spend a bit of time with me because what we're going to, to sort of talk about to, uh, right now is how does Lumion help? So, you know, we've been in the, the US now for, you know, a little over a year and um, we, we're, we're nicely nestled on the Kitsis advice tech map, if you've seen that, uh, under advice engagement, and we're, we, we're doing some, some really cool work here. But um, I would forgive you to go, okay, what is it What is it that Lumion does and how does it fit into what we've just spoken about uh, around creating transformational experiences? So if you go with me here on the slide that I've got, um, I'm going to walk you through how we've reimagined the advice experience because we recognise that for advisors, um, all of this stuff that Dennis has just spoken about and, and creating these really imaginative client experiences that help people think about what's most important to them is all really excellent. But what do I need to do? What's step one? Are there great tools and exercises and frameworks out there that help me do what I do, but even better or help me sort of scale the things that I do really well so that uh, my new staff member can do that? All of those things that are on, are on our mind and we've de designed our tech uh, as a series of tools and exercises around a reimagined advice experiences to help you deliver that. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of slides and I'll show you a little bit of the tech and uh, as a little bit of a teaser um, so that you can maybe uh, opt in to, to, to get a little bit more of a deep dive for yourselves. But when we're thinking through this, what, um, what it means for us is we think to, to start a great imaginative or reimagined client experience that you have to start with a client's well-being first. And what we mean by that is we're leveraging research out of the University of Michigan here in the States that says to live a life well-lived or a fulfilled life, to use a different term, you must consider how you're progressing across eight dimensions of well-being, not just one typically the financial dimension of well-being that I think a lot of us are really well versed in. But what this research suggests is to live a, a totally fulfilled life, you've got to be really cognizant that there's seven more. There's intellectual, occupational, spiritual, all of these things. Now, I don't need you to be an expert in them today, um, but know that that's where we start. We give you a, a great tool that I'll show you in a moment that helps you assess a client's fulfillment across those things and immediately starts your experience as a differentiated proposition for your clients. Once you understand their well-being and where they're looking to, to, to sort of uh, grow their fulfillment, what we then help you do is identify what their values are. Why do we start with values? I mean, values-based advice isn't a new experience or isn't a new topic, you know. It, it's quite well-versed over here and some of you might be well-versed in it already. But why we believe in it is we believe that to understand what's most important to a client, you've got to start with their values because of what we know is values drive clients' behaviour and client behaviour drives results. I mean, Dennis just spoke a lot about behavioural finance. No doubt that's part of it, but it's all those non-financial things as well. It's stimulating the client and making them understand the choices that they can make aligned to what's most important to them because, unfortunately, the reality of the situation is you can't be with them every second of every minute of every day. And they're going to need to make great decisions outside of your office. And when you're in, the, when they're in your office and you're staging that great client experience, you stage it around what you know they value and what's most important to them. Once you understand their values, then we think you can turn those intangible values into really truly personalized goals. 
something really tangible. This is stuff that we know that financial advisors do really well already because everyone likes putting them into a smart goal framework so that we can put them into a, a Money Guide Pro or a Monte Carlo simulator, or whatever your, your favourite planning tool is. But what we like to think about is if you go through the first couple exercises, what you get are really personalised goals, not just your typical, you know, retire at age 65 on $80,000 per year and maybe save for college funding, but all those things that they're too afraid to say because they don't know if this is the right environment for them to say it. They're the personalised goals we're talking about. And then and only then can you link your expertise. So our software then helps you understand or, or de de deliver your services and how they align to your client's goals, values, and well-being, creating that truly transformational experience and go, hey, because of everything that you told me is so important to you, I've listened and here's the right services that I have in my back pocket that's going to help you do this if we work together. So that's a, a great little sort of overview of what we do here at Lumion. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little bit under the curtains here. If you do this, this is what we've learned. Something magical really happens. Of all the clients on Lumion, um, they report themselves as 66% fulfilled across those eight dimensions of well-being, with their top two areas being social and environmental, not financial. They want to work on things like spending more time with friends and family or changing the physical environment that they live in. When you start to understand their values and think about personalised goals and get them talking about what they really want to achieve, we hear 7.6 goals per household. So that's a little bit more than just retire at 65 and start a college fund. It's things like, I want to renovate. I want to remodel. I've always wanted to take mum on that trip. No expenses spared to Italy. Whatever it might be, we hear all those. Because what we do know about our clients is out of all the customers on the Lumion platform, these are their top three values. Support and protect those I love. Feel confident in my finances and become more active and healthy. Yeah, right? I saw Dennis just shivering there. Yeah, imagine how your advice experience changes when you know that. So by now, typically people are saying to me, that's all well and good, but how do you get that information? Cool, no problems. Let's get into it. I'm going to give you a couple minutes of just a little bit of a screenshot into what Lumion does. Here you're looking at the Lumion platform. What we like to call this is a client experience and advice engagement platform. What does that actually mean? It's a series of tools and exercises, as you can see on the left-hand side, that you can deliver either before your meeting or during your meeting. And as your clients go through these tools and experiences with you, what you're effectively building out is their client platform the portal that they log into afterwards. No longer do you just sign them up for, you know, your, your, your investment portal and go, here, you can track your investments over time. That's cool. Still need it. Don't get me wrong. But how about having a, a life score that says, hey, this is how fulfilled you were last time we chatted um, and where you're at now across those eight dimensions of well-being. These are the ones that you identified were really important. These are the ones we're working on. You know, Jenny over here wants to work on setting up, pursuing education and changing the environment that she's in. Cool. We can work on that. And you can track that over time so that hopefully they're going up, but maybe sometimes they go down too. That's the reality of life. You can work through our values exercise and track their top five values. So if you look through here, when it eventually comes up, their top five values get tracked over time. How do they feel they're progressing against their number one value as a household volunteering their time? What are the supporting goals they have on their mind when they talk about, I really want to be better at spending without guilt? They might be saving for college, getting a handle on my budget, purchasing that fishing boat I've always wanted to purchase. And checking in on that in every progress meeting or every check-in call, as Dennis mentioned, so that you can make sure they're, they're, they're on track. We know as part of behavioural finance, visualisation is key. Imagine starting your progress meeting experience at this goals page, going, hey, these are all the things that we're doing together and you're, you're going to do to live your best life. And the client can add these images for them. So where are we up to? How, are we, how Have we bought that place in the mountains to retire to? Is that now done? And the cool thing about our platform here is everything that's done stays memorialised in it over time so that if there are bumps in the road and maybe the markets go down, you can re-inform re, uh, your clients. This is what it's all about, all these things that we're doing together. The markets will go up and down. What's most important is who we're helping you become and what we're helping you achieve. Look at all of the stuff you've done already. Well done. 
Lastly, as I mentioned, we've got uh, you know, key advice areas here is where you could link your services um, to these areas. So you can see here, you know, if you've got things like budget, cash flow management, totally configurable, you can change what these look like. But as I mentioned earlier, it's about linking these back to, okay, we're going to execute this because it's going to help you achieve this goal, which helps you achieve that value. And then setting them a task because sometimes clients need to play a role as well. We know that you can't do it all. But we, we believe that you can't get that behaviour change until you connect your planning to their purpose. And that's what Key Advice Areas helps you do. You can see over on the left-hand side, I could talk about this for hours, but uh, on the left-hand side, we've got some table stakes in there as well. We've got our fact-finding tool, which is governance. We've got our uh, Monte Carlo simulator in here that I'm just getting up, which is uh, our best life modelling tool, which allows you to sort of show everything that they've spoken to you from a goals perspective, whether they're on track, off track, or in this case for Tom and Jenny, they're overfunded so they can get a little bit more out of life if they really wanted to stretch themselves. And you can see that timeline of their goals and when uh, they're going to run out of money, if they're going to run out of money. So that's a little bit of a teaser of Lumia. Nicola has, um, has uh, posted in the chat there a little link that you can go if you want to get a personalised demo of what this might mean for, for your uh, practice. We'd be really, really eager to show you um, because we believe this coupled with what you've learned for Dennis creates really truly uh, transformational experiences. So um, I'm going to hand over to Davis right now, but if there's any questions on anything that I've mentioned, uh, the Lumion platform, please, we'll, we'll get some time at the end for, for Q&A. But with that, I'll stop sharing. Davis, let's get you on the screen here. Good, sir. And then... Davis, mate, good to have you. Um, so we've spoken a lot already about uh, what it means to create truly transformational experiences for your clients, how you might do that with Lumion's tech. But to the point that um, we were sort of speaking about with Dennis, you know, a lot of this takes time and I've got to find more time. Um, and Liberty Fi is you know, a really great example of how you think through scaling operations uh, and internal practices and experiences for for, for both advisors and their clients. So do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about how Liberty Fire thinks about scaling that stuff? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Mark. Dennis, uh, you did a great job there. That was uh, really informative for, for those on the call. So I, I learned I learned a lot myself, so thank you. Um, yeah, no, great, great question, Mark. And I, I think one of the things, you know, regarding, you know, time and, you know, specifically, specifically Liberty Fast Services is, you know, it, before we get an introduction or, you know, we're introducing to a prospect or a breakaway advisor, you know, I think one thing that's really important in the process is just evaluating, hey, is this going to be a good fit? We, we know what we do well with, with servicing the investment platform and servicing our clients. Um, but what I think is really important and kind of under underappreciated is, is that evaluation process of, of meeting, uh, you know, what the what that prospect or business owner's uh, expectations are, their goals with their practice, and is this going to be a good fit? Um, so I really think that, you know, we, we haven't harped on that enough, um, but I do think that's really important uh, when, you know, when having that introduction with, uh, with a client. Yeah, that's great, Davis. And, and what are some of the ways that a practice might be a good fit? Like what are the things that you really help them do? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we... We help breakaway advisors, whether it's an existing RA or a hybrid RA, kind of start their own business. Um, and that can be from you know, converting uh, to a new custodian. It might be they need new paperwork. Um, we use kind of our, our Rolodex network uh, to our advantage to introduce you know, firms and clients, advisors to the right prospective people. You know, Liberty Five, we experience uh, you know, our, our expertise is in middle and back office support. So, you know, for the most part, we're, we're doing you know, all the heavy lifting of the conversion process for finance advisors. So, uh, you know, that can be, uh, you know, supporting them to make sure that they're making the right decisions with their technology, uh, introducing them to the right context of, you know, they might need help with credit, they might need help with making investment decisions. Uh, so we're acting as that key kind of home office contact. We want to feel like we're a part of their team. You know, we work with 24 firms today, but, you know, realistically, we feel like our, we're, we're a team member on each one of those firms, uh, home office staff. Uh, and that's kind of the feel that we like to, you know, uh, emphasize when, when we're partnering up with a firm. 
Yeah, I love that. It's, um, you know, for, for these practices, wanting to grow, grow that scale and efficiency and, and partner with someone for that home office type experience. What I love observing from Liberty Fire and the way they treat their advisors is, is that homely feel and, and that, you know, I want to be a partner in your business. I, I want to feel like part of the team. Can, can you maybe give us some examples around how you work with some of those practices. I know you mentioned some of the services you help them with, middle and back office support, but um, some of the ways practices are leveraging you right now and as, as that home office? Yeah, no, great, great points. Uh, yeah, you know, the key to, you know, how we can leverage our expertise is knowing, you know, what the, the advisor, financial advisor of the firm's, you know, expectations or business needs are, right? And so if they're looking for, you know, help with third party managers or offloading trading or, you know, whatever that need may be, um, we're there to either, you know, train them how to do it on a, using the tech platform or you introduce them to, you know, a, a product expertise or, you know, someone who actually uh, expert is an expert in that field. Um, but a little bit about, you know, what we've been doing recently, you know, revolves around, you know, we've, we've introducing whether it be alternative investments into clients' portfolios or structured notes, um, and really trying to make sure advisors are comfortable with how those assets are being reported uh, and scaling using our team to kind of leverage and scale out those operations to make sure they're comfortable um, with, you know, how things are being reported just regarding, you know, those types of securities. Yeah, cool. I, I can totally see how that works and, and how people might want to use Liberty Fire for that. You know, um, in speaking with with members of your team, it, it feels to me that what you're looking for, and well, not just what you're looking for, but how you help these businesses trying to scale is um, what are the things that we can do for you and actually are really good at doing, right? So, you know, all that middle and back office support so that you can spend the time where only you can do that. And that's creating great client experiences, being front of mind for your client, being in their face, uh, helping them do the things that only you can do by asking the questions or delivering the experiences that only you can you can um, sort of deliver. You, know, you mentioned a little bit that you, you do a bit of training as well as part of that. Do you, do you want to maybe tell a little bit about the, the training services that you offer as well as you know, just the fact that you deliver the services to yeah, so, you know, most of our firms utilize the investment platform, uh, which we think is, you know, a great platform to kind of leverage most of your technology, you know, to do just about, you know, mo most things on a on a day-to-day -day basis that a financial advisor needs to do, you can do on that platform. And so that's really where we hone in and focus uh, most of our training on is, you know, whether it's the advisor, you know, using home office models and, they need help organizing the structure of, of how they're delivering those. Um, we we kind of work with them and handhold them the best way to set them up on the system and make sure they're comfortable uh, with with the technology that they're utilizing. Right? I mean, most most advisors, you know, they they aren't the best with tech usually, and that's where it helps to have a, a personal number to call. And that's really what I think we kind of stand out from is that, you know, we expect advisors to call our, our cell phones, home, home lines um, with help with any questions. If something, you know, comes up in need, you're not calling a 1-800 number. Uh, I, I think that's very important for advisors to feel comfortable in who they're partnering with and make sure that they're, you know, in contact with that. Um, but to kind of get back to your question on the kind of trading tech, uh, you know, most, most advisors or, you know, or most businesses that we work with, you know, we try and uh, get them to offload as much trading uh, as they can because they can spend more time with their clients and uh, growing their, their business as, as needed. But, uh, you know, we, we step in and make sure that, you know, they're comfortable with, with the tech they're using uh, today to run their business. Yeah, I love that, right? So you're training them so they can get efficiencies where they can, but equally going, hey, we can do that. For, for you and you know, maybe even training the right person in that business to, to take that off the advisor as well. And what I also love about what you just said is, you know, you, you're really cognizant of, of that advisor's time. Uh, and when you match that to what you said right at the start around feeling like a partner or feeling part of the team and being able to go, hey, you've got all these really lofty aspirations about your business and you're, you're a breakaway and you really want to scale, then, hey, partner with us or let us take that off your plate. So the, you can do some really cool things. 
Exactly. Guys, that's that's Mark, excellent. Yeah, Mark, if I can add to that, you know, I worked with uh, the Liberty Phi team uh, during my previous life at Investa, and it was, um, you know, I consistently uh, say when I'm referring back to the team that uh, I was humbly, um, you know, one of the most humbling moments of my career was helping them to get off the ground in the partnership with investment that they had. Uh, what they brought was not only that scale, but their own expertise. They were previous users of the platform. They understood it. Their training, everything that they bring to a new firm is going to bring efficiency and upscale and bring that client experience um, really to the forefront of every one of their partners that they have. So that was one of the reasons that I felt like we at Lumiant needed to definitely be a, a partner with Liberty Phi because that's what they do. They focus on not only the scale, but the experience for not only the advisors and making sure that they have training and the efficiencies are built in, but they're then working on the experience of that end client. And uh, so it was, again, another lovely moment in my career when we were able to partner with Liberty Phi and uh, their firms. Thanks, Nicola. That's brilliant. Thank you, Nicola. I, and look, to, to, to sort of draw a nice little bow on it, um, you know, you've heard quite a bit today, uh, everyone. So if uh, I'm going to summarize it, but if there's any questions that might be on your mind, please feel free to pop them in the, the chat. We can absolutely carve out the last nine minutes to answer any questions, whether they be for Dennis, myself, or Nicola from a Lumion perspective, or, or Davis from a uh, from a Liberty Five perspective. Please um, take the time to, to to type away, and we'll get to them. But what you've heard today um, from all of us is that what what's most meaningful to your business is your clients and arguably the experience you give them and how big or how transformational you, you want to make that experience is up to you and the choices that you make uh, as a business owner, as a financial planner or advisor around the role that you want to play in that experience. You've got a great community of people on this call that can all help you with their expertise uh, and you've heard some great practices but know that you, you, you're not alone to make these choices. Some of these choices can be super simple. To Dennis's point, could be a dollar glass or half bottle. Uh, Dennis, when, when you were saying that one, uh, it reminded me of an advisor back, uh, back in Australia. What they used to do is just put their client's name on a car parking spot out the front of the office. Now, it was, it was his car parking spot, but he would yeah. just put, he, he, would, he would move his car and put the client's name on it. Really simple, but imagine how that client would have felt. Doesn't need to be super, super expensive. Equally, you could do something a little bit more expensive. Um, you could then partner with someone like Illumiant because we know that to deliver those experiences, deliver them at scale so that you've got data to play with or you've got frameworks to make sure that you're being consistent around that, uh, that experience every time, you can use something like Illumiant. Um, we know that to do all of those things, you need to find time right? And it is time well invested for yourselves, but that means you may not be able to do some of the things that you've done in the past. And, and to do that, you might need to, to partner with someone like a Liberty Fi, who can take some of those trading uh, or middle and back office types sort of services off your plate so that you can focus on what we believe a lot of people love focusing on, which is their end client experience. So in summary, I think that's everything. Is there any other questions or anything that might have popped through? Nicola, anything that I've missed? I haven't seen anything come through. More than uh, happy to follow up with anyone via the link that was shared in the chat. And of course, you'll receive that via the email. So, yeah. Perfect. Dennis, Davis, anything from any closing words from either of you? No, no my friend. I just want to say thank you for this conversation. And I'd also like to say, you know, the evidence proves that we're right. Mm -hmm. This is what our clients want to be talking to us about. Advisors want to be advisors want to be differentiated. They want to generate more revenue per client, run a great business, and they want more introductions. And as clients, what we think about now is a life 
well lived. We can afford, we are privileged to actually entertain thoughts that perhaps our parents and certainly our grandparents never did. And all of the evidence tells us that, the reports tell us that. This is what clients want. They want assistance and guidance. They want to manage their money. They don't, they, they, then they want to move on just like I have. I mean, those things you shared earlier, Mark, I had a little laugh. Thank God I was muted. So it's like, what the hell? That's what I talked about this morning over coffee with my wife. What are you kidding me? Literally those things. Am I that predictable? <laughs> That's where we're at. When the financial plan is in place, the true value of the financial advisor so you can talk about something that's actually important. What are you going to do with your time? And who are we helping the client become? Thanks for this, Mark. It was tons of fun. Thank you for your time, Dennis. Thanks for uh, thanks for organizing and hosting for us, Nicola Davis. Thank you for giving us your time and, and sharing the Liberty Fire story. Thanks, everyone, that's given us their hour out of their day uh, for, for dialing in or, or watching the on-demand recording. Uh, we really appreciate it and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Take care, man.